Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. <laughs> I hope the lunches are tasty. Um, I hear we ran out of the chicken option a little early, so I'll make the recommendation for next month. Oh, okay. Yeah, Dave's got it covered. As you can see, this is not Jim Warner. This is Dave Brew. <laughs> Jim Warner could not make it today um, because of other obligations that he has. Um, so he regrets that he cannot make it, but he assures us that Dave is going to be an excellent presenter. So, And I can attest to Dave because I've seen him in action. He's pretty great. So, um, I want to introduce Dave Brew. He is, our, he is certified chef de cuisine here in the Central Production Kitchen at the OSU Wexner Medical Center under Nutrition Services. He's been doing that for, he tells me, seven years now. Oh, wow, yeah. And before that, he was um, working in production kitchens down in Orlando, Florida for Disney World. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yes, we have the best and the brightest here at OSU. <laughs> so, so everyone, please give him a warm round of applause. And here's the deal. Do not, um, you can ask whatever questions you like. You don't have to wait for the microphone today. So just kind of shout them out um, throughout the program if you have them. You don't have to wait till the end and enjoy your cooking yeah, demonstration. Yeah, actually, um, feel free to ask. I don't, I am an open book as far as I'm concerned. A lot of chefs, people think chefs aren't. I am. I'm, I'm all about sharing food knowledge. If I can, if I can make you happy, if something you learn something from me, take it with you, take it home. Um, that's great. Yeah, so as Lauren was saying, I, I, my name is David Brew. I, I, I do run the Central Production Kitchen here. I am a chef de cuisine. I do a lot of the research and development and menu development for stuff that you guys are going to be seeing in the cafeteria, block cafe. Um, I open the smoothie bar, the new Neuro Bistro down there. If anybody hasn't any, um, those are all me. Those are all my recipes, everything like that. We designed that whole coffee bar, con smoothie bar concept that seems to be getting a lot busier lately. So uh, other than that, uh, this is my good friend Hannah Salmon. Yeah, so I'm just kidding. Her last name's Solomon. I apologize. I've been picking on her because she couldn't pronounce digital. So, because we were also trying. <laughs> now she's going to hate me for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, uh, we were trying to figure out how to pronounce celeriac. Is that right? <laughs> celeriac root? Neither one of us knew how to do it. Um, but other than that, yeah. So, I, 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 if I dump my thing here. Yeah, 10 points right there. Um, uh, yeah, so I run the production kitchen here, so everything like that. Yes, I did used to work at Disney World, and I'm actually heading there in one hour after this demo <laughs> for a long overdue uh, vacation that I haven't had in about 18 months. So other than that, other than that, so holiday cooking. Um, I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do. Number one, anytime anybody asks you for holiday cooking, you can automatically go to chocolate or peppermint. Hands down, any desserts, a lot of people ask for that. Um, or you can sing Simon and Garfunkel in your head, and that's, you know, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. It goes good with anything and everything. Um, so with that being said, uh, we, uh, Jim and I came up with a couple of dishes real quick. Uh, I don't know if everybody got packets for you or anything like that. So I want to show you a couple of quick techniques. I am a big fan of hanging out with my family and friends during the holidays. I do not like to be cooking, but yet everybody expects me to. It's one of those things. It's, you know, part of the job, I guess you would say, <laughs> in a weird way. So my goal here today is to kind of show you quicker methods to do stuff and maybe some more nutritional dense items that, that you can kind of translate for the holidays and still look all Christmassy and everything like that and it's uh, be a lot better for you. Um, so first dish I'm actually going to start out with today is our roasted turkey tenderloin here. This is quick. Um, sometimes people have, uh, they, they want holiday food but they really don't want to buy that giant turkey that's 18, 19, 22 pounds, stuff like that. So you can actually purchase this. Um, this is a turkey tenderloin breast, so just like a chicken tenderloin, just bigger. Um, and I think I paid 10 bucks for it, something like that at the store. Real simple, same kind of flavor, same kind of concept. Turkey breast, that kind of thing. I just went ahead and re-vacuum sealed it so we could kind of show you here. And uh, what we're going to do here is, I'm going to turn this down, it's going to get hot, um, is uh, we're just going to pan sear it and braise it. Now, you can do this on a stovetop or you can do it in an oven. Uh, the recipe there says for stovetop directions um, and let it cook. You remember, you always want, especially with any kind of poultry, we want to temperature it out. We want it to be 165 degrees internally so that nobody gets sick. It's a big, 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 big thing. Um, but you can also throw this in the oven as well. So you can pan sear it real quick, get a nice crust over top of it, and uh, throw it in the oven to 350 degrees for about maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that. You can get all that flavors in there, and it'll we'll basically we'll go, what we call braising it there. So kind of show you everything here. 
this off of my so don't need to have nasty turkey hands all that good stuff so real simple just like the tenderloin Ooh, turn that off there i gonna get hot that's okay the, the best way to get a nice sear on it is when you start to see just that smoke hit just like that you can everybody can kind of see it it's not burning the oil yet it will if it's going too quick but very simple nice and hot get that nice brown seared crust on it that everybody's looking for when we eat something like that so I'm just gonna read what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna quickly see your season season it not too much um, Jim actually had a great idea when he came up with this um, just to kind of watch our sodium levels and sodium intake and stuff like that not saying that we have to just saying that we can um, when we do it some chefs do some chefs don't some chefs hate it some chefs love it doesn't matter but the, this is just this mixture of salt and pepper it actually allows me to see what is going on my turkey or my meat or whatever I'm seasoning right there because I can see the black pepper I cannot see salt it's once it starts to dissolve it gets in there it's just one of those things that you, you can't really see it but I can see the pe pepper and if I know that there's enough pepper on there I know there's enough salt on there so that's one of those things that I don't have to kind of visually worry about that kind of thing so um, this so we're just gonna go ahead and this is gonna get loud here in a second here eh, that one's I think it's a little bit more pepper than salt just because he's very heart healthy conscious he's get two to one ratio of pepper to salt yeah um, sorry Hannah knows more about that than I do uh, so we're gonna hit this up real quick but you can see I've turned this off and it's still going real quick not a lot of oil and we're gonna cool that pan down just real quick here but get it going there just enough to cover the bottom of it there get enough see once it goes on the pan there Keep in mind that we don't want to um, move it because it will lose all the crust and it'll like get white turkey and I like brown. It makes it look better. So we're gonna let that go for a few minutes there. Um, start to hear that sizzle, get it rolling, that kind of stuff. There we go. That's nice. And this is a real simple, 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 simple recipe. Uh, impart a bunch of flavor. I know this says tarragon on your recipe there. I chose thyme just because it was a hospital or it's a holiday thing. I do like thyme a little bit more. Um, shallots, the other onion, awesome. If you get a chance to buy them, pick them up. Want to learn about them? A lot less onion flavor in them. Still good aroma. Still does have the onion flavor. Not as bitey. You know, so you don't have to overpower it. I want to taste the turkey for what it is. I want to taste the apple cider for what it is, that kind of stuff. So all that good stuff. There we are. Let me get this going here. Once you're about a couple minutes in there, take a look at the brown here. If anybody can see it, it's kind of starting to brown just like that here. Um, we'll get the other one going here. At that point in time, just add a little bit of the shallots here. Nice aromatics behind it. Everybody should be smelling this by now. There we go. Just like that. So now, get this going. It's a little warm. There we go. What that's going to do is going to, you know, just release all that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful flavor there. Sometimes one time somebody asked me if there was one thing that I could cook with for the rest of my life, what would it be? And I said it was an onion. There we go. Nice brown color on that one. Just like that. So many things you can do with them. So many things you can do with them there. So right now, I'm going to deglaze this. I've got some white wine right here. Um, alcohol first, always. Get that nice, uh, I can make it flame, but I don't really want to. Kind of see there. There we go. Kind of those fun little methods there. Like I said, we're going to braise that. A little bit of apple cider vinegar just to kind of break it down there. And now we're going. We're rocking and rolling. A little bit more acid behind it. And I am going to go ahead. It, it just, it, it literally releases all the caramelization under here. So if you saw the pan, I'm sorry, I couldn't pull it up. All the brown stuff is stuck to the bottom. We call it a sook or a fond. Um, it releases it off the pan better than anything else. So just for FYI purposes. So we're going to go ahead and add our chicken stock here. There's a couple of ways that we do why we use what we use. I don't like broth. A lot of people don't or purchase broth around the holidays. That's one of those things that it is what it is. 
the company so seasons that broth for you. They tell you how much sodium is in it. They tell you what, what's in it, that kind of stuff. Stock, on the other hand, when you purchase it, has absolutely zero seasonings in it. There's no sodium. There's no nothing. It's just stock. So it just tastes like chicken um, or turkey or whatever you want it to use. I'm going to add a little bit more aromatics here and get this going. My favorite herb on the planet. Fresh time there. So um, and we're going to get this to the back burner and go from there. So you can get a nice burner here. So, sorry, I've got two things going on at once. Do we have the fuel? My this is going to take us a few seconds. Like I said, if you do it in the oven, it only takes about 15 minutes for a nice little conventional heat there. Um, but for our cooking demonstration purposes, we're going to have it rock and roll back here. Here we go. All right. Let's see if we can get this thing to go and reduce. Now, the cool thing about all of that, when it's all said and done, we've reduced the, we've reduced it as much as we want, and the turkey's cooked. And um, we can take the the liquid that's in there, and make a nice little sauce out of it. And that's the best part of it. Take all that goodness that's in there. There's a lot of flavor in that pan right now. So we'll put a little bit more stock in there. It's called a breathing, very easy method. So the cool thing about that is, is that's a set and forget type of thing. You saw how quickly that took me to make. It was done. It's over. I've mise and my ingredients, which I've got everything ready to go beforehand. Uh, I, now it's in my oven. I don't have to think about it. It's done when it's done because I'm not timing it. I'm, I'm monitoring it with an internal temperature. I highly recommend getting a, a, a digital thermometer if anybody has one, just for the simple fact it makes cooking a lot easier. A lot easier. Three fifty. It's about fifteen to eighteen minutes. Every uh, oven varies. You know, you have some good ones that are out there. You have some bad ones out there. Um, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, it's called a pan, it's quick pan sear, and then we're braising it is what it is basically. So we're taking all that liquid that's in there, and and cooking it in itself. So we we'll retain a lot of moisture that way too. So that way you know I don't. I hate dry turkey. I cannot stand dry turkey. It kills me. Uh, uh -huh. I added more. No, a cup's fine. If it's done in an oven, like I was just telling you about, cup is fine. I'm actually cooking it on this, continually cooking it, so it's going to take a few minutes. The more liquid I can get in there, it's going to evaporate, basically. So I'm just kind of putting a little bit extra in there just to make sure that I know that it's safe for everybody to eat, basically. So, when it's all said and done, there. Cool. All right. So our turkey's rolling. That's uh, that's that's a big thing right there. Turkey is rolling, and it's going to take some time. Like I said. So, what do we have up next? We have oh, this one's awesome. Uh, Hannah and Jim did this one before. Uh, this is um, this is our uh, roasted winter squash and apple. Is that correct? Uh, hash. Is that what we're doing here? So any squash will work. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of them going on right now. They're cheap, too, uh, especially if people want to get them out of their grocery stores. So butternut squash is what I chose today. We can get acorn. We can get any, anything that's out there right now. I know if anybody's into Lynn's Apple Farm, you can get all this stuff there. You can get a multitude of different squashes and, and pumpkins and everything like that. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, kind of show you how to, how to get this going. Um, to start this recipe, let me get all this crap out of here. Where's the rest of our stuff here? Here we go. Start this one. I've already kind of done a little bit of the work, and you can do. You can all do do this stuff ahead of time. This stuff holds in the refrigerator for about five to seven days, something like that. Um, I've gone ahead and already roasted this off, just for magic of TV and time's sake, so we don't have to sit here and do this. But you can, like I said, you can do all this stuff ahead of time, so that allows you to spend more time with your guests, that kind of thing. But uh, this is butternut squash here. I don't know how many people actually cook with this. Or not, this is one of my favorite things. You can do lots of stuff with this too. Uh, they get the good big ones, the big gourd ones there. Um, when you cut this stuff out here, um, I actually take the seeds and I soak them in salt water and garlic and I'll brine it real good and then I'll bake them off in the oven. Nice little pumpkin seed snack or butternut squash seed snack. Uh, my kids love them, they just go, go, to, go to town on them. A little high in sodium, but you know what? For the most part, it's still pretty tasty. So um, that's easy, easy here. That's just simple as taking a squash part and just grabbing the guts out of it. For this method, for what I would be doing and tell people how to do it, I mean, this beautiful orange 
squash here. Um, roast these things first, about 350 degrees, 400 degrees, something like that. Uh, put a little olive oil, just a little olive oil over top of them, stick them on a sheet tray, upside down, skin up. So you're going to take about 35, 40 minutes, something like that. And when they do come out and they pop out, they're going, to stay, they're going to stay pretty firm, but the skin will pop right off. You don't have to worry about peeling it or taking all that extra time to peel it or anything along those lines. But you still get a nice pliable chunk of nice sweet potato. So when we throw that in a firing, frying pan, it should be all, should be all kinds of nummy. Yeah. No, the underneath it. You can season it too. I'll do that real quick here just to kind of show you guys how, what, it, what it'll look like. Um, just put a little bit on your finger. You don't need much. Just a little bit. Kind of just rub it in there, just like that. Can you do any other, like, like, frying? You can. Yeah, it, it really all depends on what your dish is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you're going to do it, put it in the cavity. So, so that's there. So you're not actually touching it. It's not actually going to burn on there in any way, shape, or form. Just kind of like if you stuff your turkey at home during Thanksgiving, I don't put stuffing in there. That's gross. That's an internal <laughs> cavity. I don't know why people still do that or if they even still do that or not. But I'll shove a ton of thyme and a ton of rosemary and a ton of sage in there. And I'll take parsley stems, not leaves, stems only, and we'll throw it in there. So the reason why it's stems only, it's the same way if you were to make a stock or anything like that, is because stems aren't bitter, believe it or not, when you start to cook them. The parsley leaves get extremely bitter. They ruin everything if you try to cook with the actual parsley leaves. Eat them, you're fine. If it's fresh, it's great. They taste awesome. It's got that fresh, herby taste to it. But just a kind of like a quick cooking tip for everybody. Use the stems. It's a product utilization thing, too. Chefs do it all the time because what am I going to do with this bunch of stems after I've chopped my parsley for my dish? You know, oh, okay, well, I'll just throw it in my stock or I'll throw it in my, my turkeys or stuff like that. So that kind of thing. But that's just really simple, like I said. And you just, once again, just season them up like this. Stick them on there. Done. Real easy. Like I said, you can do all of this ahead of time. So I'm just going to pull this aside because I've already done it. Out first, yeah. Like I said, I grind mine. I uh, I try to, I try to find ways to make my kids snacks. Is basically what it comes down to. My girls don't stop eating ever. I don't know why. My well, dad's not a chef or anything. So um, here, here's a little bit. Of, I don't need that anymore. So, all right. Doing good. Sorry, I'm gonna keep constantly looking at our turkey there. Nice little smelling delicious back here. All right. What else do we have on this? Yeah, that's. So this one's cool. I'm going to get this going real quick here. Before I do all of that, I'm going to get these cranberries going. Anybody make fresh cranberries in their, in their life at all? Oh, yeah. That's my favorite. I can't stand the jelly stuff. My dad loves it. I don't know why these things are going. So this is kind of cool little, little, little cranberry jam. Um, I'm a big fan of ginger in my life. It's very, very good for you. Um, so what we did is we took some fresh ginger and minced it up real good there for you. And I'm going to go to the bottom half of that recipe if you want to take a look at it real quick there. And get this going because this is going to take a second to get going there. So that just kind of shows you how that's going to work. Get that rolling. These things go, they start popping. They pop real quick. Like, and they get splatter everywhere. It's great. I love it. My kids love it. They're like, Dad, the cranberries are popping. So, yep, time to get going. So there's that. What's that recipe book? Did I put it somewhere? Ah, there we go. All right. So. Oh, okay, cool. So get those going. Yeah, they, they're, they'll, uh, they'll get going, and then we'll just add some sugar real quick to it, and the ginger and the garlic, and that'll, that'll get rolling there. All right. <laughs> Usually while we're doing it, that's... When we throw in the there. Um, now, so this is cool. You can do this breakfast. This is a breakfast one. I thought I brought a couple of eggs here to kind of show everybody. And I did. Real quick on how to do that. There we go. There we go. All right. Cool. So this is going. Well, this is all one. We've already made, made this up. We can go ahead and make our um, celeriac <laughs> puree, apple and potato puree there. So uh, none of us can pronounce it. If anybody doesn't know what celery root is or what it looks like or how you guys get your celery, that's what it looks like. It's kind of neat. These things get huge, big, bulbous things. Um, that's how you get your big stocks that you see and everything like that. Don't be afraid of them. You'll find them in the store. They will not, mostly not have these. They'll look like this. That's what it is. A lot of people use it. It's a pretty neat little 
neat little thing there. Um, tastes like celery, <laughs> believe it or not. There we go. Nice and poppy poppy. There we are. Um, most people cut it with a knife just like this. You just kind of shave it down. I wouldn't use a peeler. It gets pretty gross, pretty cruddy. Kind of see that there. But it's a pretty dense product. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because, you know, I told you, I don't know if I mentioned it, my wife is a diabetic, and I kind of like try to find things to supplement carbs with. A lot of people are. They want to watch, watch the diet. Everybody wants to watch how that works. Uh, I don't need to eat all the calories and carbs of Thanksgiving holiday meals and feeling crazy full or anything along those lines. So what can I make? What kind of products are out there that, that I can use to make food taste good and still be fulfilling? This happens to be one of them. So like I said, celery root, nice and white. Very thick, very dense. Um, when you come through it here, you just kind of cut through it just like that. Cooks the same way as a potato does. Smells like celery. That's about it. So you can just dice it up just like you normally would with everything else. My big thing with, the, with it is you want uniformity in your pieces. You want everything to cook evenly. So when you make this and you boil it off just like a potato, it's all the same size. You know, they call it chef's dice for a reason. It's just like that. Looks like that, smells like that. There you go. You kind of sit here and do that with everything just like that. So I'm going to also show you one quick trick too. Next part of this is the fennel bulb. Anybody like anus? anus? I'm a huge black licorice fan, huge. My kids steal mine, I don't know why, but people look at me and they go, this is gross. Okay, I get that. Uh, so, but this is how they sold, they're sold to you in the supermarket. One of the biggest things I tell everybody in any supermarket is, is that no supermarket manager or employee will ever tell you to not do that. You pay for pound for this. I'm not gonna eat this. I'm just not, I'm gonna do this with it very bitter okay so why am I paying for that at the grocery store heads up next time you're at the grocery store and you only need that much they're not going to tell you that it's paid per pound so just kind of a neat little grocery store trick what's that fennel fennel so cool thing about fennel you just kind of chop it just like that kind of you don't really need that if you want to put it in a stupor stock that's that that's fine too I like it in my stock I'm kind of just making a V cut at the bottom here there's a nasty core in it you want to get rid of it it's gross doesn't, you can't do anything. It's very fibrous, very chewy. Can't do anything with it. And then you sit here. Now, I've already done all of this. I'm just kind of showing you how to do it. But you just kind of sit here and you rock your knife back and forth just like that. Just chop it up. Voila. Very simple, straightforward. Just like the celeric root there, just like that. So, cool thing about that. That's done. Apples work the same way. That kind of stuff. You know, this way I'm just going to peel it. It's all going to be one color. Kind of see it behind me here. Quick peel. Takes me back to many days of yore of peeling potatoes. Got really good at it. Um, very simple. Want to get most out of the apple when you do this. Kind of see this. You get pretty close to the core. You're not going to hit the root, the, the, the core of it. So it kind of gets that pocket, the seed pocket out. Everything like that. Dice it just like the rest of everything else. Real simple. Kind of rough chop on that. Once again, all the same color, basically looks the same, everything like that. So we're gonna make faux mashed potatoes real quick. You can. It's not good. It's not good when you make this. Yeah, you can. Absolutely. But it, it all depends on what you're looking for. You're looking for that what we call rustic. Anytime anybody asks me if I forgot to do something, what is it? It's rustic. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you bought it and I got away with it. All right. <laughs> That's all this game is anymore, to be honest with you. So um, so there's that. Uh, what else goes in this one? Does onion go in this one too? I think so. Flip it. Sorry, I'm doing two recipes at once here. I apologize. Yeah, so cool. Onion does go in this one. I'm trying to utilize my time as best as I possibly can. That way we can see three different dishes here. We can get it done within an hour. So the cool thing about this one, I don't know if anybody's ever showed you this trick. This is a neat little one. How you cut an onion, how to dice it, make it look all same and pencil, pr pretty and everything like that. You want to not smell the onions and not cry, I cry all the time, but the sharp knife usually works that. That's about the best way. They make onion goggles too. I thought those were funny. I love watching people put those on. <laughs> but sharp knife, just sharpen your knife, make sure it's sharp, you won't, you won't cry. Onions are old. I don't know if you guys know that or not about onions. They're sitting in a warehouse in a bag and then sit there for four to five months. I guarantee it, they don't go anywhere, they don't go bad. You know, as long as they're temperature controlled, they're fine. I know that's it's just the way that the grocery stores bring it to you. Um, but with this one being said, you want to keep it with the root on one side, 
and chop off the other the top part. The root actually holds it together just like anything else, and you just peel that off. It's funny how much grocery stores make on peeled onions, by the way. Look at the price variance in that. And then you just come in here, carefully take your knife, kind of flip it back and forth just like that, and come down, follow the lines of the onions. You can see how my knife is just kind of going right through it there. And then when I take one final swoop, I've got diced onions. Very simple, very easy. Fastest way to dice an onion ever. So just kind of do that. You get through there, and you're just like, oh, that's a cup of diced onions. It took him, how long did it take him? Not very. OK, there you go. Just like that. Very simple. Very, very simple. So that's it. OK, now that that's all said and done, we're going to take that and how did it say to do this? You can saute it in a pan for 35 minutes if you want. Not an issue there. What I did was I ended up one doing one of those kitchen tricks that I know how to do is basically I stick it in the oven for about 15 minutes after a little bit of a little bit of sauce reduction in there, and I came up with the finished product of how are we doing over here? Oh, that smells good. Um, of this basically is what it looks like. All the same stuff like that. So. A couple different ways to do it. Anybody have an immersion blender at home? Okay. Oh, you do. All right, good. Anybody have a real blender at home? I have a blender. I like margaritas. They're my favorite. So um, with that being said, uh, you can just take this and to make a quick puree out of it. About this. Add a little bit of water to this. Cranberries are almost done. They're looking great. All right. Take this and just to kind of show you guys what you can do with this. Most of the time, you just take a saute pan. Throw it all in there. A little bit of butter. A little bit of. Little bit of uh, I reduce the apple juice into this, uh, or apple cider. Always use apple cider instead of apple juice. There's a lot more flavor in it. Um, and if I can find my gloves, hopefully this works. I grab my blender here, and I stick it in there. Make sure you do not do this when it's hot. It will blow up your blender. I promise you. And you will get a mess everywhere. I know I made that mistake once in culinary school. Chef looked at me and said, you're an idiot. I said, OK. <laughs> Thanks, Chef. I really appreciate that. Can I have another, please? So let it cool down just a little bit. It just has to be room temperature. It doesn't have to be super cold in any way, shape, or form. Just you don't want that initial heat blast of 180-some degrees in here. So put a little of this in here. And the way you do that, once that's all said and done, just like that. Take this off. I'm not paid to say this, but Blendtec is the best blender to buy. Don't screw those ninjas. I recommend it. In. Sit there. Need a little bit more, a little more juice here. You can always add a little bit to it. Just uh, one of the big things I'll always teach and tell everybody, yes, there is a recipe for it. Recipe is always a guideline. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. <laughs> your your cup is definitely different than mine. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. So this will get going here, and we will throw this on top of it. Hannah, you want to do me a favor? Come back. Awesome. There we go. How are we looking? Hey, we hit we hit the magic number. Sweet. So just to kind of show everybody what that looks like there, let me grab a plate. So that is apples, potatoes, celery root, fennel, a little bit of onions in there. Where's that spoon at? Okay, let it go a little bit longer. Ah, here we go. And just like mom used to make. Mashed potatoes, I guarantee it looks pretty much the same way. Just throw it on there, nice little lumps and everything, just like that. Voila. Nice and done. Just looks like a mashed potatoes. Half of it's vegetables, half of it, you know, part of it's fruit. So potatoes are a very small amount in that, so I've eliminated a lot of those carbohydrates, which, you know, hopefully you guys can, when, I'll heat it back up for everybody if anybody wants to taste it real quick. So, and these are going great. All right.
I, I didn't. Yeah, you should put it. I just forgot the yogurt. You, you can. You don't have to. Right. You can. You don't have to. Now, Hannah and I were just looking this up, and one of the things with, the, with yogurt is um, with the bacteria that's involved in it, if you're not extremely lactose intolerant, it might be okay for you. Um, some people, a lot of uh, people that are lactose intolerant can eat the sharp aged cheese, the like cheddar that's been aged for two to four years, something along those lines. Okay, well, there you go. I didn't put that in there, so you can eat it. Okay, I was thinking of you. Um, so there's that. <laughs> so, get that going. All right, our cranberries are going great here. This is super spectacular. All right. So I've pretty basically, like I said, just cooked the cranberries. They've all popped. They're, they make, we're starting to make this cranberry sauce and into our reduction. We're going to add our little garlic here. And of course, we're a chef, so we like it a garlic. The garlic is good. And then I love ginger. I'm sorry. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I love it. I love it. We were just eating some uh, kimchi. I made some kimchi earlier this week, and I were just having some. It turned out pretty good. Yeah. So what we're going to do basically right here is we're going to make this like cranberry relish sauce that's going to get a little salt and pepper, just like that. Oh, la, la, la. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we got our cranberries going. Typical traditional Thanksgiving dinner, mashed potatoes, cranberries, turkey. So, there we go. Nice. All right. Now we're going to move on to the hash. You can totally make this. The, the, my kids love this kind of stuff. Um, breakfast hashes and casseroles and stuff like that. It's easy. I can make it the night before. I don't have to worry about waking up and making breakfast right away before I get my coffee, especially with the holidays and people in there. So there's that. Mm, all right. You got a towel on you. What's that? So you'll actually notice if you take a look. Here, let me show it to you. Keep an eye on that. See how hard these are? There we go. Have a cranberry. They're good. Um, you can kind of see this one's a little bit denser, but you can kind of see, or this one's a little rotten right there. But you can see when they pop, just like that, a pop like that. They'll just open up and they turn into a sauce. It's like Hannah's doing right now. So we'll add a little bit more water into that. Just a hair. All right, cool. So there's that. Put this off to the side here. All right, grab my, my one thing. Anybody like fried eggs? So this is uh, one of those quick things that you can do. Yeah, we'll go ahead and I'm gonna pull this in. Let's just got it. There you go. Cool. All right. So just to get it out of the way before I make the hash real quick. Simple. Hopefully I don't screw this up. A little bit of, anybody want to, if you always break your yolks, always get a nun skillet, put a little yolk, egg in it. Um, some people do, some people don't. I did for a long time. My wife, wife made fun of me. She's like, baby, we paid $40,000 for you to go to culinary school. Can't make a freaking fried egg. I'm like, yep. <laughs> so I practiced and practiced. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so there's that. Get this going here. If you want a trick, this is the stupidest trick you'll ever hear in your entire life. Start the egg off before you turn the heat on. You can totally do it. It'll totally let it takes a second, but you can do it and it'll actually puff up and be, it'll, uh, it'll look like just a, f a quick, uh, over easy egg. I wish I would have brought a container. I guess I did. Just do these. So, before the thing gets a little too hot there. Kind of see that it's not really doing much there. <whistles> Fastest way to do this, just cover it with a pan, plate, doesn't matter what it is. It'll actually cook faster if you do that. Allow it to pop up and boil and bubble. All right. There we go. Nice and done. Quick fried egg. Quit. Just like that. Told you I got good at it. She made me practice. <laughs> um, she liked fried eggs. So, I'm going to season that. 
for that. Voila, he's done. That's all it took, really, real quick there. Pull that plate out for me real quick. All right. I'm just going to set that aside there. One quick fried egg there. So I'm going to, I always start, this is just a personal preference of mine. I've always started with onions first because I like onions. I like the smell of onions. It starts to caramelize them. When you start seeing them caramelize a little bit better, get more flavor out of them that way. We call it the holy trinity. Peppers, onions, celery. You can do peppers, onions, carrots. Um, that kind of stuff. A little Christmas hash here. And just see. Beautiful color here. It goes, yeah, it's Christmas. My favorite. And like this, at this point in time, if we've done this ahead of time, all you're doing is heating it up in a frying pan. That's it. You saw how fast that went in there. You just chopped your vegetables up. You don't have to do that with your guests around. So when everybody comes over here, you can hang out, grab yourself a pint out of the fridge, get a nice glass of wine for the holidays to deal with those people. Um, <laughs> they think like my house. That's, way, <laughs> that's the way it works. So there's that. Heart healthy pint, of course. You know, one glass of wine a day is fine. So, so. Very colorful. Obviously, we're going to season real quick, just like that. Voila. Just sit here. Um, I know I saw the copper pans on sale this year for Christmas. If anybody hasn't got one, they're about 15 to 20 bucks. I'm sure you go to Bed Bath & Beyond and grab a coupon or something like that, a little bit cheaper. They're awesome. You run through the dishwasher. does the same exact thing here as these things do. It's great. So that's done there. Let me grab me a on my turkey. Oh yeah, turkey's looking good. All right. Dum, dum, dum. You try that again. Yeah. Be careful, that pan's hot. So, do not do this at home. I'm stupid. So, which is grab food out of a hot frying pan. Um, I have no feeling in my fingertips. I burned those off years ago. Okay, so, we're good. Awesome. So. A little bit of our little breakfast hash here. Like I said, do not do this at home. This pan is like 250 degrees, I'm telling you right now. So, there we go. Heat that back up real quick. Quick wipe of the plate. And this is just the professional side coming out of me here. My plate. Fried egg right over top of it. Here we go. And my sauce. Oh, my sauce is right here. That's the number. Number, number. Nice and colorful right over top of that. Just, just like that. Yeah. Yeah? Everybody okay with that? Look all right? All right. Cool. Fun part, of course, is with the egg yolk. I love breaking them. <laughs> That's the greatest thing in the world. Dipping my toast in it and just go boop. Just like that. Just cracks it right open. Love it. Love it. Love it. Good stuff. Just drizzles all that good yellow yumminess out of there. That's pretty much that. All right, cool. So, all right, Hannah is letting me know our turkey is done. So we're just gonna, this is where the fun part comes in. So, any part of cooking any sort of protein, let it rest, please. Save yourself all the trouble and let it rest. It's tired, it's been in a pan, it's been working so hard for the past 20, 30 minutes here. So, that kind of stuff. Now we've taken this. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to make our pan sauce off of it. Grab that plate, maybe wipe it off real quick. We can do a couple of different things in here. Here with this. Take a little bit of our celery here. Make it look pretty. I'm a big fan of prettiness. We're chefs. We like stuff. I like, I like shapes. Never made it past kindergarten, so. Um, there's that. Get that out of the way here. You can kind of see that this is starting to really... Starting to smell like goodness there. So, yeah, this is going to take a second. Okay, this has been cooking. All those juices, they're moving around on the inside of it there. We want them to stop. That's the biggest thing is stopping these things. So when you cut into it, it doesn't, whatever. I guarantee if you ordered a steak somewhere at any sort of restaurant whatsoever, that steak came off the grill 10 minutes before you got it. 
promise you. Um, that's just the way it works. It sits in a hotline. It allows all those, all that good ju steak juices in there. Same with any turkey, stuff like that. Allows all of that good stuff there. So just to kind of go back to the center there and everything like that, we'll take our sauce here in a second once we reduce it down. Um, all that good stuff. So pan sauce is the best sauce. All that good stuff came off the turkey. There's a reason why you should put it back on there. Um, that's just the way that works there real quick. Give that a second here. Get this going. So, any questions on the fun, healthy, a little bit better for you than turkey dinner that we can still make look like turkey dinner that no one actually doesn't ever know about? No. So it's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty intriguing. I like color in mine. Um, that's just me too. You know, you can totally put a little cornstarch in here and solidify this up here. But get get that extra flavor in there. You know, that acid going, that kind of stuff. All right, that turkey should be good. As long as you just slip through it. And mind you, these are just simple presentations. No one has to do this. Unless you're at my house and then my children, my three-year-old expects me to present like this every plate. She won't touch it if it's not. She just won't. If I, she just will not do it. If it doesn't look pretty enough, she just, she's fickle. And I don't know what I'm raising, if I'm a good parent or not. So, um, but yeah, she, that's what she does. She has to, she's very, 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 very fickle when it comes to that sort of stuff. She's also a vegetarian, so, which I didn't know three-year-olds could be a vegetarian, but apparently you can. So I'm just cutting this on a bias here. This is gonna feed a lot of people. I mean, this is probably feed upwards towards, if you think about it, how much is going on a plate, you know. I'm gonna sit there and you can kind of see how moist that is already. It's very moist, you know, you can, the turkey's just falling apart, you know. Not dry turkey. So I'm just gonna kind of fan it out here, just like that. Just like that, throw it on there. I'll take a little of this. This is going good enough. I'll take a little bit of this. And you can reuse some of this stuff too. You don't have to just use that cranberry sauce to whatever. We're just going to drizzle a little bit more juice on it. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Nice clean white plate there. I'm going to put a little red on there because I like red. It makes me happy. So, put some of this. Like I said, if you have any leftovers, utilizing product is a wonderful thing. I enjoy it. Maybe just a little cranberry dollop right on top of that there. So, so you're there. Just voila. Very simple. All right. Voila. Turkey dinner. I'll, uh, healthy. So. Any questions I can ask for you? Good deal, guys. Well, great. I'm glad you guys came out here. Hopefully everybody saw it. We were able to see some, some stuff here and learn something. Please feel free to fill out your... I'm, I'm more than welcome to, uh, happy to ask, answer any questions if anybody has it, anything along those lines. Uh, you're more than welcome to come up here and try it. Mind you, the celery puree is probably cold. I can probably warm that up real quick, I guess. But you're more than welcome to come try the, try the turkey real quick if anybody wants to come try it. So. There we go. <laughs> Fried eggs are great. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah. I'll also That's make good. a note as you're exiting, there is some uh, OSU health plan programs that are going on in January. And if you would like to I'm know some additional it. health Shut wellness programs right. for the new year, if you're preparing, I highly advise you take the uh, flyer that's outside on the table. So pick one of those up, post it in your office. And if you have a question, Sam and uh, Jessica are right here in the middle of the audience. Wave hi. 